Essence Hydra Matte Lipsticks. Oh, I love these. Oh. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. So I have got my February, I had to think about it, February favorites for y'all today. So what I like to do in these videos is quickly mention my overall Friday favorites for the month and then I also share other favorites with you. So maybe makeup favorites, skincare, um, hair care, fashion, books. I love to share book favorites. So I've got some of those things for you in this video and just kind of chatting about the things that I was loving in February. So if you are new here, my name is Leslie. Welcome. I love to do favorites videos, new at the drugstore, get ready with me's, reviews, empties, just a lot of fun stuff here on my channel. So if you're new, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button and stuck around for a while. I'd love to have you here on my channel. So yeah, we are chatting about February favorites. So let's get to it. Okay, so for over all Friday favorites I would say for eyes um, what I have on my eyes right now which is Laura Geller baked bronze and brighten and fair I love to wear a nice bronzer shade on my eyes for an easy eye look and this is one of my very favorites it's all kind of I I messed it up so you can't really see how pretty it is but it's this beautiful blushy bronzer shade it looks beautiful on the cheeks it looks gorgeous on the eyes really works very well as a shadow and i just love it it just makes this like not over the top sort of an eye look i also love it just kind of as a blending crease shade it's great for that too to pair with other things it's just good and then with that the ulta i've mentioned these before the, i was loving these last year too and they're just so good the ulta lustrous foil eyeshadows in silver leaf and rose gold leaf if you want to see swatches of any of these overall friday favorites definitely check out the friday favorites where i originally mentioned them because they go in more depth i swatch them all those things so yeah this one is rose gold leaf and this one is silver leaf i have rose gold leaf on my lids i have silver leaf on the inner corners of my eyes it's really more of a champagne-y light peach sort of a shade for cheeks just all of the new essence cheek products i would say so the um, Baby Got Blush little cheek, what would you call these, like blush sticks? So good, they blend well, they look beautiful on the skin. I think they smell good, like watermelon Jolly Ranchers. Um, yeah, they're just great little blush sticks. I love them and I like blush sticks okay, but it's not kind of one of my go-to makeup products, but I really, really like these. And then the Pure Nude Baked Blushes. Oh my goodness, these are so good. They are beautiful. They are glowy and gorgeous and flattering. I would say my main favorite is Shimmery Rose. And then in this one, um, Tickled Pink. So kind of more like pinky. And then this is a little bit more of like a pinky peach, I would say. They're so good. And then for lips, the Essence Hydra Matte Lipsticks. Oh, I love these. Oh, <laughs> so good. This one is Virtue Rose, such a cute kind of like reddish rose shade. Great formula, little bit of a funky smell. That's the only thing about them, but I love the formula so much, I'm fine with that. And then, oh, definitely have to mention the Ofra Liquid Highlighter in Cupid. Oh, the name fell off, but I'm almost positive this one is Cupid. It's the lighter pink shade. This is so pretty and gorgeous and versatile you can like kind of build it on itself and it's just this beautiful light pink shade and I just love it such a good liquid highlighter okay so a makeup product this is something I heard about from a girl on TikTok and I don't remember her name on there but if I can find her I will list her username down below but she does a lot of um bridal makeup and she mentioned finding this concealer recently and saying she loves it for uh, mature under eyes for under eyes with fine lines, but just like a great under eye concealer in general. So I don't have a ton of fine lines under my eyes, but I do definitely have some, but I have some crazy under eye discoloration. I mean, it's not like crazy, crazy over the top, but I use a lot of concealer. So I'm always kind of curious to try things that sound like they're great, even though I love, love, love my Maybelline concealers and it's tough to beat those. I was just curious to try it and I ended up loving it. So this is the L'Oreal True Match Eye Cream in a Concealer. 
So it's like a treatment sort of a product with a concealer. So it says 5% pure hyaluronic acid. I got the shade C12 Fair because I have the foundation in the neutral shade range, but I love a pinky toned under eye concealer. So that's why I got the cool tone shade C1 and 2. So it says eye area looks fresher, less puffy in a week, instantly covers dark circles, instant coverage and results, 24 hour hydration. Um, does it say anything else? Lightweight blendable formula, fragrance free, does not clog pores. So it comes in a tube, which is totally fine. I am totally fine with that. And I really like this. I think it looks very fresh and very flattering under the eyes. Now I will say coverage, I wish this had a little bit more coverage, so I pair it with something else. But if you are looking for something that is nice and hydrating and smooth for under your eyes and you've tried other things and you just feel like it all looks too um, crepey, too drying, I would say give this a try because I am very impressed with it with just the hydration and how it looks under the eyes. It looks very flattering and forgiving, um, just very kind of smooth. And I think it's because it's an eye cream with a concealer. So I really, really like this. Now I want a little bit more coverage. So I mentioned this in my favorites, I think last month, the Ofra Perfect Cover Concealer. Oh my goodness, I love this so much. This is a great, like good coverage concealer that is still flattering. So I have been using this as kind of the main thing under my eyes, just a small amount. I don't use very much of it. And then I get the tiniest amount of this concealer. I'll just get a tiny little dot with my finger and put it just right in here where my under eye circles are kind of the most defined. And I feel like if I go right over the discoloration and then a little bit outside of it, it kind of hides that line. You know what I mean? It, it makes this area look more of the same color and just kind of hides that discoloration. So that's what I've been doing, pairing these together. I really, really like them together and I think they're very flattering um, under the eyes. Just a good concealer combo. I gotta mention these skincare products again. I know I mentioned them last year. They made them into my yearly favorites, but these are just kind of some of my go, why do I still have this box? I don't even know, I just do. Some of my go-to skincare products that I keep using consistently right now, um, especially when I feel like my skin is more dry or my skin barrier seems a little bit agitated where I've got a little bit more flakes or tiny little bumps or something. That's kind of when I can tell I need to just sort of calm my skin down. So these are some of my go-to products that I've been using. This one is less like, it's not really for calming, but I don't find that this irritates my skin and I find that it's very anti-aging. I love this. The Ordinary Argireline Solution. Um, this is so good for fine lines. So I have really been concentrating this right here, right here, here, and then on my smile lines. So just to really kind of address those fine lines and I can definitely see a difference. I have used a lot of this very consistently because I just love it. It's super affordable. It's like under $10 and it's just amazing. So if you're looking for a great product for addressing fine lines, I think that one is amazing. I have been loving it. And then these two for just hydration of my skin. This is the uh, Coast RX. I got this off Amazon. This is the Advanced Snail 96 Mucin Power Essence. This has a really strange texture to it. I mean, it's literally like, like it's like this, like a snail. It's so strange, but very nice and hydrating. I love how this feels on my skin. I really feel like it does help with the hydration on my skin. So I will apply this first, let it set into my skin. And then this is my go-to favorite cream right now. I just absolutely love this. The Pacifica Vegan Ceramide Barrier Cream. It says concentrated ceramides, lipids, and calendula. Yeah, I guess. Um, so it's supposed to be really good for sensitive skin. It says barrier support for sensitive and dry skin. So if you have sensitive and dry skin, which I really don't, I have more 
My skin's not overly sensitive and I would say it's more kind of combo, but my cheeks can definitely get dry. Um, even my forehead can, it can be oily and then dry like in the same day. So I just want something that's just making my skin barrier happy. And this has been my go-to. Such a good cream. I love it. It is affordable and it's just amazing. So if you're looking for good hydration that has those very kind of calming ceramides, ceramides are great for the skin barrier and it's calming for the skin. This is just so good. It's my go-to favorite cream right now. I'm very consistent with using some kind of a lip balm before I go to bed at night, and this one has been my go-to recently. Love this. This is the Pixie Skin Treats Botanical Collagen Lip Gloss. It says volumizing lip balm um, enriched with botanical collagen. This volumizing and nourishing lip balm leaves a glossy finish. So I mean, probably better for every day so that you can get the kind of collagen plumping look for daytime. But I found that this is just really nice and hydrating for nighttime. And then I wake up and my lips are nice and hydrated and I like the idea of adding collagen to my lips to kind of get that anti-aging plumping sort of look to the lips. Uh, so it's like a good treatment for the lips at nighttime, but then also just nice and hydrating. So I've been waking up and liking how the effect looks the next morning just hydrated um and i guess maybe more plump i don't know but just mainly hydrated lips i liked this a lot it's that kind of angled sort of an applicator and it's not overly thick sometimes um lip products in this sort of packaging it's difficult to like get it out of the packaging but this is great like it's not overly liquidy, but it's not too thick either. It's just a really good formula. Okay, we are on to books. You guys, I've got so many. I've got two that I would say are like my main standout favorites. I read a ton of thrillers, so I've got a lot to share with you. But let's go over a quick um, little rom-com. This is a YA romance that I really, really love. This is The Do-Over by Lynn Painter. This was my first, I think, Lynn Painter book that I've read, and I really liked her writing style. It was funny, it was cute lighthearted. Um, this is basically like Groundhog Day mixed with Valentine's Day. She ends up repeating Valentine's Day over and over and over. I read another book that was like a repeating day and I didn't like it as much. This one I really liked though. It was just cute and lighthearted and sweet. Um, and yeah, I love the, the um, I was gonna say the packaging. <laughs> I love the cover on this. The pink with the yellow is just adorable. So I'm excited to read more from her because I really liked her writing style. Okay, thrillers so where do i even start let's go let's do these three right here okay so um loving the kind of snowy setting thrillers so this is a ya thriller this doesn't have like stellar reviews on goodreads but i really liked this it's called five total strangers and it's about this girl who um meets a girl on a plane she's trying to get home and you know there's crazy snowy weather so she ends up riding with this girl that she just met on the plane and then two other people and it's just their crazy ride in the car with crazy weather things and car trouble and things go missing of theirs and so it's just kind of like a series of unfortunate events and you're trying to figure out like what's going on are they going to make it there who's the bad guy, you know, that kind of thing. So it's not like it's super in depth or anything like that, but it's just a fun, fast paced, easy to read wild ride. And I loved it. I thought it was great. If you're just looking for kind of, you know, I don't know, not a super intense thriller, but just something that's fun and fast to read. I really liked that one. This one, An Unwanted Guest by Sherry Lapina. I read another Sherry Lapina book, which I think was The Couple Next Door, and I thought it was just okay, but I really liked this one. This reminded me so much of Clue. If you love the movie Clue, this is so much like that. Quite a few characters, but I didn't find it difficult to keep track of them. Short, quick chapters, especially as it, as it gets closer to the end of the book, there's it'll like switch perspectives but it tells you who it's switching to. It's not difficult to keep track of, but it makes it just really fast to read and really fun to read. The very end um, didn't overly wow me. Like it just, the end part was not my favorite, but I didn't like hate it, but I still really liked this book overall. So if you like the movie Clue, you like that kind of like locked door, 
um, mystery where people keep being unalived and you're trying to figure out who the bad guy is and they're like stuck in this house. I think you'd really like this book. I thought it was good and it just, it reminded me so much of Clue and I love the movie Clue. Okay, this one, Overnight Guest by Heather Gutenkopf? Gutenkopf? So this one is more on the dark side and this is more of a thriller like I say always always check trigger warnings about anything that you're gonna read if you have certain triggers just check them even even a romance sometimes there can be topics in there that you might not know are gonna be in there so it's always a good idea but especially thrillers so this one um, is a little bit it's definitely more on the dark side but I loved how it ended and it's one of those thrillers that you sort of read and are like confused for a long <laughs> period of time like you're just sort of like reading like okay and if there's different perspectives and you're not quite really sure kind of if or how things fit together or f like you're just trying to figure out what's going on you know what I mean so it's like puzzle pieces that you're kind of just reading about and this is very much that type of a thriller and it does definitely go pretty dark but then it kind of wraps up at the end and I like how the ending was so I, I didn't give this one like a full five star. I think I gave it like four and a half just because it, it, it does have that slight confusing, but not that that's a bad thing. It's just sort of the, the, the type of thriller that it is and then the, that it gets a little bit dark, but I still did really enjoy it. Um, I liked her writing style. I read this really quickly. I found her writing style really easy to read. It's a good one. Then I read two more Frieda McFadden books. I just love her thrillers. Oh my goodness. So good. So do not disturb. This is um, about a girl who I don't want to give anything away. Let's see. Um, yeah, so she has the main character committed a crime and she is basically fleeing and there's bad weather, a snowstorm, and she stops at this old kind of rundown looking motel very much reminds you of like Bates Motel or something like that. And the story goes from there. So you're wondering like, is she going to get caught? what's going on with this hotel, who are these people, what are their stories. Again, this one gets a little heavy and dark, but then again, I liked the ending of it. So uh, that's kind of a theme with me. Sometimes when thrillers are like, ooh, like it gets a little heavy or extra sad, but then things kind of, as long as they like twist at the end or like, you know, wrap up somehow usually I end up liking them so this one the housemaid this one is the one that everybody talks about it's really really hyped but I like it I think it's a great book um again there were a couple things in here so th this one certain parts of it like gets darker and is like borderline horror just and I can't reveal any of it otherwise I'm going to give it away but Again, I liked the way the story progressed and things that happened in the storyline. So as I was reading, I was like, I don't really like that, that that's happening. Ooh, that's a little dark. But then like, as it went along, I just really liked it. There's a sequel to this and yeah, I just love her writing. She's so quick and fast to read. I mean, I feel like every, so this is, I think my third one. And um, every one that I've read of hers, I've read in like basically 24 hours. It's just so easy and quick and fast to read. Okay, I would say my two standout favorite books, These Silent Woods. This is by Kim Cunningham Grant. And this is like a family um, heartfelt mystery story. So it's not a thriller. It's not super fast paced, but it is a story that moves along. And it really kept me intrigued. I really cared about these characters. It's about these two characters who are living in the woods and there's a Chester here on it. <laughs> living in the woods and you don't know why they're out there, but they're kind of living separated from everybody and kind of like living in these woods. They have a friend that brings them supplies once a year and then this person does not show up one year and they're trying to figure out what they're gonna do. So you're wondering, what's going to happen with them and then also what happened in the past for why they're there and it's just a really sweet heartfelt story i was just so invested in these characters so yeah it's like it's like a mystery with a lot of heart to it so and also like a you know it's kind of atmospheric that they're in the woods so i liked that too it was just really really good and it's a short quick read it's like under 300 pages 
yeah, like 270 something pages. So it's a short, quick read that's really sweet. And this one, oh, this is so good. This is In Search of a Prince by Tony Shiloh. So this is a Christian fiction romance. So it says contemporary romance, um, but I think it has like a lot more, like there's a lot more story to it than just the romance part of the story. So this girl, she's living in New York, she's a teacher, and she finds out that she is a princess for this small African island country. And so she ends up going there and meeting her grandfather who she has never met before. And so their story is really sweet. So that's kind of the family part. Um, their relationship is just really sweet and tender hearted. And then she's trying to decide, is she going to kind of take her place as the princess and the future queen? So the storyline of that and where she's trying to make that decision is so sweet because this is a Christian book. So she is talking to the Lord. Her prayers are so sweet. Um, her friend is a side character in this and it's her storyline for the second book. So I can't wait to read that book because her friend was just really funny and outgoing and she's a fashion designer and their conversations together about her making this decision and them praying together. It was just so sweet and really just pulled at my heart. I loved that. So then once she like makes that decision, this is all on the back. Um, once she makes that decision, then she finds out that there's this clause or this like certain um, rule that she has to be married in order to take her position as queen. So it's her like in search of a prince, her finding her prince, and it's just, really sweet, really good. There's a lot of different parts to the story. Um, it is a, a like a longer book. It's a, uh, well, not really. I mean, it's like 200 and no, 372 pages. So it's a slightly longer book. So that's why it wasn't like a full five star for me. I think I would have loved it if it was maybe just a, a, a little bit shorter and it takes a little bit to kind of like get into the meat of the story. But once it hit like the halfway point or so, I absolutely loved it. And I loved the faith in it. That was my favorite part of it. I loved Tony uh, Shiloh's writing style. So I'm really excited to read the second book and then other books from her in the future. All right, you guys, so those are all my February favorites. So hope that you really enjoyed this video. Please hit a thumbs up if you did. Let me know down below what you have been loving, either makeup, skincare, hair care, fashion, home, definitely books. Let me know that down below. Ask me any questions that you have. I'm happy to answer those. Please subscribe to my channel if you're not already, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!